How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Study At, and in today's lesson we'll be looking at the odd one out. This is a common question that appears within non-verbal reasoning, and literally all you have to do is, well, spot the odd one out. Sounds simple, and for the most part it is, but as we move on to some harder examples, you'll understand how important it is to spot those not-so-obvious links. The approach. Our first step when looking at any odd one out question is to look for any obvious links or relationships. This could be something you can spot immediately, such as a certain answer that just looks out of place, or in fact two shapes with clear similarities. By spotting two shapes with clear similarities, what that allows you to do is now eliminate those two. As you now know, neither of those can be an odd one out, which makes everything simpler because now you'll have a much easier decision to make when it comes to spotting the answer. Applying spans will also come in handy when spotting the odd one out, so I'd highly recommend remembering to apply it, as it gives you a list of differences to look out for when answering the question. Spans stands for shape, position, angle, number, size and shadings. And the best way to use spans is by working your way down each letter and look to see if you can spot that in each question. So with all that being said, let's start off with example one. There are four shapes in four boxes. One of the shapes is not like the others. Circle the letter to show the odd one out. OK, now, going back to the first step of our approach, it was to spot any obvious links. Straight away, I can see that each figure has nine shapes inside of it, so I'll make a note of that on the side. You also might be able to spot that A and B are a similar pair because they both are 2D shapes and have nine shapes inside of it. What we can do is cross those two off as they can't be the odd one out. If I then look at C, I can immediately tell that it has 3D shapes within the figure, which is different to A, B and D, therefore resulting in it being the odd one out. Just a quick recap, we spotted the obvious links, which was each figure had nine shapes within it. And also then by applying spans, we recognised that C is different to the others as it is a 3D shape. The next question says there are four shapes in four boxes. One of the shapes is not like the others. Circle the letter to show the odd one out. Something that I can spot straight away is that each figure has two rectangles. But if we go a bit further in depth, you'll see that one of those two rectangles overlaps the other one at one of the edges. Taking a look at spans, we can see that each figure has the same shape, which is a rectangle. And in terms of position, the rectangle overlaps at the edges. By looking at that information we have just spotted, we can mark C as the odd one out since it is the only figure that does not actually overlap at the edge and isn't positioned at the correct angle. Moving on to something more challenging, the question says there are four shapes in four boxes. One of the shapes is not like the others. Circle the letter to show the odd one out. What I'll do once again is write down anything I notice by going down the list of spans starting with shape. What you'll notice is that each figure has a bigger shape and then a smaller shape underneath it. Looking at position, you'll see that each figure has an upward facing arrow. You could also point out that the smaller shape is directly aligned in the middle. When using spans, you don't have to go over each individual aspect of it. As you know, you'll be under timed conditions, but it is good practice to get used to writing a few points you can spot about the question on the side when starting out. Since we've already noticed parts of the question that link to angle, number and size, what we can do is now take a look at the shading. This is something that I've seen catch out a lot of students, and it's the small changes to look out for, such as shading. By taking a closer look, you can see that each image should have an identical shading or pattern as the one above. It's the same with A. As you can see, it has a pattern with lines facing upwards on both its smaller and bigger shape. If you take a closer look at B, what I noticed is that the larger shape has a diagonal line and the smaller shape has a horizontal line, which means that B is in fact the odd one out. And that all came down to shading, because even C and D have the same shading or pattern when taking a closer look. Just remember that the answer may come down to the tiny differences that you wouldn't notice straight away, and in this case, it was the shading. That's it for today's lesson on the odd one out. Don't forget to have a go at the quiz right after this, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.